So today we're going to talk about point of sight VPNs and how I can get behind, get onto my VNet and into my subnets from my local machine, even if all the public endpoints are disabled and everything's only accessible internally, either through, you know, what do they call them? Service endpoints or private link endpoints, right? So it turns out there's some funkiness when you want to do an Azure point to site VPN. And the biggest one is like, why, what, am I, what happened to my DNS, right? So let's go to talk about that a little bit. So, you know, Basically, when we want to get onto our Azure resources from a local developer machine or from a local developer network, we basically got, you know, like five choices. I'm sure there's more. Uh, you can create a point to site connection, gate VPN tunnel from your machine into the Azure uh, virtual network gateway. And that way your, your local machine is on a network that's attached to your peered with your VNet and then you can see everything. You can do site to site. So all the machines in a sub or your local network would be visible, or that's also how you would do cloud to cloud or VNet to VNet. Um, sometimes if you did VNet pairing, um, and then you would use a bastion host would be another. So that's like RDP. You would basically set up VMs and RDP into those through the bastion host. Uh, there's cloud shell, which is sort of a solution, but not really maybe for doing debugging, that kind of thing. Um, or you could leave everything open to the internet. Right? I'm assuming that the portal is not an option. You're gonna, not going to do everything with clicking because if you are just, you know what, go work in a data center somewhere. Okay, so what I chose was do point to site VPN, right? That means my machine is going to be connected. Let's look at this. So I apologize for the background here, but basically what happens is you got your Azure subscription, you got global resources like Azure DNS. So this is like all the private link DNS. And if you did storage, anything that's a, private link, you know, private dot, whatever, Azure DNS name, um, you know, would show up in this thing. And sometimes it shows up in the public DNS too, but with a public IP. But in my case, I block all that. Everything has to be accessed from behind, uh, from inside the VNet. And that's where we got here. And so, you know, my Cosmos database is blocked and you can only get to it from a private link endpoint that's in my on a subnet in my VNet. Um, and so what you do is you set up a virtual network gateway in its own subnet, which is required. And uh, basically what you do is you download the VPN configuration file, you enable point to site with uh, some certs and all that. And I actually have a repo that does all this. Um, and then you can download that and you can join onto the VPN connection. Now it turns out <clears throat> that inside of Azure, all of your resources on your subnet actually have a well-known address they can reach for uh, DNS. But when you do the VPN connection, that um, DNS server is not directly routable or listed across the VPN network connection. You're outside this VNet and so that address isn't reachable or even recognizable really. Uh, and it's the same in every VNet. And so what you end up doing is you have to stand up a DNS forwarder, right? And so you attach that DNS forwarder IP address to the VNet gateway. And when you download your virtual net, your uh, VPN connection config files, it'll actually give it the IP address of this DNS forwarder. So that way, all of the requests across this VPN connection for the IPs of your private links, or your, which is your Cosmos or your IPs of your VMs, the not public IP of that, or your, you know, whatever else. Um, all of that is available to this laptop or to a site through this DNS forwarder. This is like one of the weirdest things to me. You got to put a DNS forwarder out there. And really, the only way to do that is to make it a VM. Or in my case, I did an Azure container instance because I didn't want to do any work to provision a, D a VM. And I found this really cool project. Let's see, what is the name of that project? Do, do, do. I found this really cool project. So this is my repo, right? VNet point to site, blah, 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 Freeman soft GitHub. And then when you come down here, uh, you'll find down in here that I actually use this Azure container instance DNS forwarder, no code required. One line of code to deploy this DNS forwarder totally worth it to even burn a little bit of subnet here because then I didn't have to do any thinking and like provision storage for my, you know, I don't know, and all that, or like uh, SSH keys, any of that. Okay, so that's really cool. You All you got to do is provision this gateway. Oh, you know what? Let me show you. So I got a VNet, right? On the VNet, I've got a bunch of subnets. 
It turns out the gateway's got to go in its own subnet, and it, the IPs it uses, the number available, depends on how many connections are connected to it. And then in my case, I needed a place to put the DNS forwarder, which has got to be a different subnet from the gateway. And so I created an ACI subnet so I could do more ACI pieces in there. Although really, if you were doing landing zones, you wouldn't do it that way. Um, but let's pretend we're going to do it that way. And so in this case, I just dropped the, uh, I dropped, I dropped that uh, container instance in there with the DNS forwarder on it. And then that container instance came up on this IP address. And so all you do is you add that to your VNet itself, right? So it's sort of weird. Um, you got the VNet itself, and then you've got the virtual network gateway um, that actually gets configured on that. And that's also where you do your point to site and your VPN credentials and your certs and all that. And then you also have to have a DNS forwarder. And in this case, because all these were required to run the VNet, I put them in the same resource group. Um, and so, Right. And so this DNS forwarder also had an internal IP address uh, when I de deployed that container. You can see it's a container instance here. And so the address of that becomes this. So it turns out that's all really cool. And that's really all you need to do to get this working, sort of. Now, um, so the, the rest of this is really just talking about how you got to do this bind server and you create the VNet, you create the subnets, you create the VNet gateway, you create the point to site VNet. VPN server and the VNet gateway, which is a config. There's actually a button in there in the menu. Nope. Eh, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. And um, and it's all, you know, it's documented in the readme and the project. And then you download the VPN config file. You load it in your VPN. You connect to the Azure using the VPN client. I did this Windows with Windows 11 with no problems. And then you verify the name server lookup returns the internal IP address. Oh, and this is where it can go wrong right here, right? So if, so what, what can go wrong? Uh, and basically you, the, all that is checking is really like verify that you got the 10 dot address of whatever resource you're trying to look up, like the private link endpoint and not like a 55 address. So there are a couple things that could happen with this. One is you forgot to put the IP address in here and the scripts in my project actually do this automatically. They bring up the computer uh, Azure container instance, DNS forwarder, and then they get the IP of that thing and they add it in here. It's all sequenced out to make that work. Um, and so, and you can even look in like your uh, VPN connect file and see if the DNS is there. So, you know, like if you downloaded the VPN connection data first, um, before you added this, it won't have it, and then you add it later. You actually have to re-download the VPN software once you add it. I should have put that in the notes. Okay, but it turns out this can go badly in a different way. And it turns out, and I'm going to do this all in here. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Okay, so it turns out uh, you can have another situation. So every one of your network, you know what, we're going to stay on this one. So every one of your network interfaces is an actual interface card. So in my case, I've got all these, I've got VMware installed, I've got WSL installed, Azure Sphere installed, and I've got this point-to-point -point connection, network VNet connection. And so this is basically the VPN tunnel. So on my machine, I've actually got Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and the VNet. And you can see here in the priority, which is sort of what this is, that the Ethernet and the VNet actually have the same priority, but the index of the Ethernet in Ethernet is lower. And I think this is how it works. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So this guy's DNS is used um, before this one. So you got to figure out a way to change the metrics on one of these interfaces, which you can do. In my case, and so you can see here, I'm still using my local DNS server and I got the public IP for this thing, which is not what I wanted. And so the Wi-Fi is down. And in this case, you can see that um, these two first and fourth are the same priority. So what I did was I went, I unplugged my ethernet cable. Oh, and I should have bolted these all the way across. I'll do that. So the ethernet is now disconnected here, right? And I have my VNet connection and I've got my Wi-Fi and the VNet metrics are a lower number than the Wi-Fi. And so now when I do a DNS lookup, an NS lookup for my 
uh, blob store. I don't even have to use the private address at this case, right? Um, basically, it will re it actually automatically returns the private link. So I did an NS lookup on the main name, and I was given the private link version back because I'm using the DNS. And so I did my got my 10 dot address. And so that's it. Uh, there are a couple different steps. I'll fix the bolding on that page. So there's a couple different steps around this. Uh, like I said, basically, we're going to bring up a VNet. We're going to create it. Got to create a DNS forward, or we're going to add it to that. We're going to download the VPN config, and then we're going to open this VPN connection. And then your laptop will just look like this other network. It's on the same network. And then I gave you some troubleshooting. So I hope that helped. Uh, you can kind of look at the code in here and the README on this project. Have a great day.